Hello, my scholars. Welcome to my school channel. Here we'll be tackling jam past questions for English language year 2019. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us and we'll be right back. Welcome back to my school channel. In this video clip, we'll be tackling question 86 to 110. So moving on to question 86. The employer, not the sales boy and his partner, that's responsible for the loss. In this question, we are supposed to fill in the missing gap, which is in a verb form. Option A, are. Option B, are being. Option C, are never. Option D, is. Now, the subject is a singular subject, the employer, not the sales boy and his partner is just a distractor. The employer is the subject and it is singular. Don't forget in the rule of Concord that says a singular subject must agree with a singular verb. Now, the only singular verb in this option is option D, is the employer, not the sales boy and his partner, is responsible for the loss. Option D is the correct answer. Question 87. Both questions are alternatives. You answer dash one dash the other. Option A, either slash or. Option B, neither slash no. Option C, either slash no. Option D, neither slash or. Now, first and foremost, conceptually, we do not use either slash no together. We don't use neither slash or together. The right way or the proper way to use the word is either slash or or neither slash no. So we are ruling out option C and D. We are left with A and B. Now what does either mean? Either means one or the other. It means choices, having to choose between two options. Why neither means none. No choice, not an alternative. So, judging from my explanation and the sentence, we see that there are choices, there are two choices here, and it has to be either one or the other. Option A is the correct answer. Question 88. It is high time we dash C R. Option A, stop. Option B, will stop. Option C, stopped. Option D, stops. Now, whenever you see a phrase that begins with I time or includes the idiom I time, it, is, it means something that should have been done and that is a past tense. So whatever phrase that you'll be using after that idiom should be in its past tense. Now looking at this option, whether you have a plural stop verb or singular verb, it does not apply. You need to use a past tense form of verb. Now, C will stop, which is a future tense, but then option C is in its past tense. Stopped. At this high time, we stopped C now. At this high time, we made our decision. So you use a past tense in, in sentences like this. When you have the phrase or the idiom, it is high time. Option C is the correct answer. Question 89. You can have dash of these two books. Option A, either. Option B, none. Option C, any. Option D, some. Now, the first option, either, like I said before, either is used to um, describe a choice between two objects or two things. None implies negativity and it does not apply to this sentence. You can have none. It does not apply. It's not applicable. Option C, any. Any is, will be used to describe a choice among so many other choices or so many other things. That is when your choices are above two, use any to describe that particular choice. Option D, some. Some is used to describe an um, indefinite quantity, the quantity that can, you cannot count. So we, have, we can see from my explanation that D and B should be ruled out. But then A and B, the difference between option A and C rather is that 
A would use to describe a, a, a choice between two things. Why? Any will use to describe a choice between several other things, more than two. So from this sentence, we see that we are, we are talking about two books. So you can have either of those two books. If we have several books, then we can use any. So option A is the correct answer. Question 19. Either Buntu or you dash to go. Option A was, option B are, option C as, option D is. In the rule of Concord, it states that when either or neither is used to join two singular nouns together, the verb that should follow should be a singular verb. Now, let's look at the options. Was is a singular verb. Are is a plural verb. C, option C, as is a singular verb. Option D, is is a singular verb. Now, option A was is a past tense but then this sentence is in its present tense so we would want to rule out was we are left with b c and d option b r is a plural verb from the rule of concord you might want to rule out this but then option c and d are both present tense and both singular verb now these two options can be used in this sentence and contextually Grammatically, they will be correct. Now, let's go back to the rule of concord. That same rule gives an exception. It states that when either or neither is used to join two subjects together, that is, one singular and the other plural, the verb that should follow should be the verb in the same form with the noun or pronoun before it. Now, what is the noun before the verb that should be here? The pronoun is you. Now, the plural form of you is also you. So, if you is a plural, the verb should also be a plural. In that rule of concord, it states that if it means that or it implies that if the, 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 the noun closest to the verb is in plural form, the verb should also be in plural form. So, you can take the form of plural and so would consider option B, which is a plural verb, A, as the safest answer. Option B is the safest answer. Question 91. The prisoner finally dashed that he drank to dash on the night he committed the murder. Option A, accident slash access. Option B, conceded slash excess. Option C, exceeded slash extreme. And option D, eluded slash escape. Option A, accident means to approach. Access means a means of entry or approaching. Option B, conceded, which means to yield or surrender. Access, which means beyond limits. Um, option C, exceeded, which means greater than. Extreme, which means um, the highest degree or uh, the greatest degree or greatest point. Option D, alluded to escape escape to get away from or to be free from something so from this context we see that the prisoner finally surrendered or yielded or accepted so option b entails conceded which means to yield that he drank we want we have a feeling of drank too much on the night he committed the murder so excess which means um, beyond limits so option b is the correct answer. Question 92. Choose the correct interpretations of the st statement given for questions below. I know my onions. Option A, I know my job very well. Option B, I know my rights. Option C, I am clever because of experience. Option D, I am aware of my position. Now, what does it mean to say I know my onions? It means to know a great deal about a particular subject, about a particular field of study, or a, partic a particular role. Now let's look at the options. We we'll want to rule out option B and D because it does not really interpret this statement. Now option C, I am clever because of experience is not specified in a role or a particular field. So option A is the best answer. I know my job very well. Option A is the correct answer. Question 93, choose the current interpretations 
of the statement given for questions below. America is the mecca of the world. Option A, America is the commercial garden of the world. Option B, America is a beautiful place in the world. Option C, America is a place where people like to visit. Option D, America accepts assorted races throughout the world. Now, what does it mean to be the mecca of the world? So it means a place where people like to visit, a place where people would love to visit. That's what it means. So we can see from my explanation that option C is the correct answer. America is a place where people like to visit. Option C is the correct answer. Question 94. All the Nigerian footballers have itchy feet. Option A, the footballers have insured feet. Option B, the footballers use their feet to stare. Option C, the footballers like to travel. Option D, the footballers like play skillfully. Now, what does itchy feet mean? It means to travel to new places or to want to visit new places or go, new, go to new places. So we can see from my explanation that option C is the correct answer. The footballers like to travel. Do not forget to take practice questions with our simulated jam CBT pass questions. All you need to do is click on the link in the description below where it takes you to my school website. There you can find my school mobile app for your Android phones or my school software for your computers and laptops. So go ahead and take those questions. Moving on to question 95, choose the word that has an opposite meaning to the one in brackets for questions below. Mr. Santos Daliga is a dipsomaniac. Option A, Tito Taylor. Option B, a drunkard. Option C, an eater of women. Option D, a promiscuous man. What does um, dipsomaniac mean? It means one who likes to take alcoholic beverages. So we are looking for the opposite of that word. Now option A, Tito Taylor. It means one who never drinks alcohol. So who never drinks alcohol. So option A is the correct answer. I believe you enjoy this content. If you do, do not forget to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and hit the bell notification to get alerted as soon as we release new videos. Question 96. The jello fries served at the wedding reception was malodorous. Option A, small but palatable. B, unpalatably big. Option C, pleasant. Option D, stale and smelly. Now, what does the word malodorous mean? It means having bad odor or having unpleasant odor. Now, we are, don't forget, we are looking for the opposite in meaning of the word in brackets. Small but palatable. Wrong. Unpalatably big. Wrong. Pleasant, which is the opposite of the word is correct. Stale and smelly, which is synonymous, is also wrong. Option C, pleasant, is the correct answer. Question 97. When it comes to playing the piano, I am a complete ignoramus. Option A, idiot. Option B, virtuoso. Option C, novice. Option D, nonentity. Now, what does ignoramus mean? It means to not know about something, to be a novice, to be ignorant about something. So that is a negative word. So what we are looking for is a positive sentence. So, or a positive word rather. Option A, idiot, is a negative word. Virtuoso is a positive word which means to be an expert in a field. And that is the opposite of the word ignoramus. Option C, novice, is a negative word which is synonymous to the word ignoramus. Option D, nonentity, is a negative word. So our answer is option B, virtuoso. Question 98. The prodigious building was raised to the carpet level yesterday. Option A, ramshackle. Option B, modern. Option C, colossal. Option D, mini-sized. Now, the word in bracket is prodigious, and we are looking for the opposite meaning to this word. Now, ramshackle means a disorder or disrepair. Modern, something new. Colossal means um, something very big, big or large. Mini size looks, means something very small. Now, the word prodigious means very large, and it is synonymous to the word colossal. However, we are looking for the opposite in meaning. Mini size is the opposite in meaning. Option D is the correct answer. Question 99. The sick man is now ambulatory. 
Option A, recovering gradually. Option B, walking. Option C, sound and health. Option D, immobile. Now, the word ambulatory means able to walk around or move around. We are looking for the opposite in meaning. Option D is the opposite in meaning immobile, which means not able to move or walk around. Option D is the correct answer. Question 100. Choose the option that is nearest the meaning to the word or words in brackets for questions below. Every human being is vulnerable to communicable disease. A. Liable. B. Lifted. C. Immune. D. Closed. Now, the word vulnerable means exposed to danger. Option A, liable, which means exposed to danger too. Option B, lifted, to be raised. It doesn't fit this context. Immune, which means to, to not to be subjected to something or when something cannot affect you. Option C, closed, is not applicable in this context. The answer is option A, liable. It is the closest in meaning or the nearest in meaning to the word vulnerable. Question 101. The student's union leader delivered a speech extempore. Option A, out of hand. Option B, accurately. Option C, off the cuff. Option D, courageously. Now, what does the word in bracket mean? Extempore. It means to do something without preparation, something that is impromptu, not planned, just doing something without preparation. Out of hand means under, not under control. Accurately means something done well. Option C, off the cuff means without preparations too. Option D, courageously means brave or bravery. Now, we are looking for the word nearest in meaning. And we can see from my explanation that off the cuff is nearest in meaning to the word extempore. So, option C is the correct answer. Question 102. These policies have been espoused by the ruling party. Option A, condemned. Option B, rejected. Option C, supported. Option D, outlined. Now, espoused means to support. Other than the primary meaning or the denotative meaning, which means to get married or to become married to. Okay, so it also means to support. So from my explanation, we see that option C is the nearest in meaning, supported. Question 103. Are findings exploded widely held beliefs about learning? Option A, challenged. Option B, debunked. Option C, projected. Option D, confirmed. Now, what does exploded mean? Well, primarily, expo exploded means to destroy. But then, connotatively, or another meaning for exploded could be disprove or discredit. So, from my explanation, looking for the nearest meaning, we see that debunked also means to discredit or to criticize something or to disapprove of something. So, option B is the correct answer. Question 104. We must not foreclose reconciliation as the purpose of a strip. Option A, exclude. Option B, consider. Option C, underestimate. Option D, forego. Now, what does foreclose mean? It means to shut out completely, to remove completely, like it doesn't exist. Option A, exclude. Exclude means to eliminate, to remove completely, to, to, to remove completely, to destroy completely like it doesn't ex exist too. Option B, consider, does not apply, is not applicable here. Option C, underestimate, does not apply here. Option D, forgo. Now, forgo means to leave out. It exists, but you are just removing it out. You are just leaving it out, letting it pass. But then it's, it exists. So imagine you having a list of things to buy and then you have to leave out something. You have to forgo a particular item to get something else. So that is what forgo means. But to exclude is to remove it completely like it doesn't exist. That is what exclude. And it is similar to the word foreclose. Option A is the correct answer. Exclude. Are there several burning questions on your mind you would like to ask? Well... There are several solution providers readily waiting to answer your questions. So go ahead and ask your questions and get solutions within a short moment. Now moving on to question 105. Choose the word that has the same vowel sound as the one in brackets from questions below. The word is guarantee. Option A, 
plot, option B, far, option C, God, option D, aunt. Now let's go back to the board for better understanding. Now the word is guarantee with the letters in brackets UA articulated as A, ah, the short sound. Now when you look at the options, you see that option A has the sound similar to that of guarantee. So this is our correct answer, as opposed to other options which has the long R sound. So this is wrong, these are wrong. Option A is the correct answer. Now judging from the explanation on the board, we see that option A plus is the correct answer. If you have better steps, solutions or explanations to any of those questions, please feel free to use the comment section below and indicate the question number and the explanation you like to share. Question 106. Choose the word that has the same vowel sound as the one in brackets from question below. The word is book. Option A, shoe. Option B, group. Option C, blue. Option D, full. Now let's go over to the board for better explanation and transcription of those words. Okay, so the word is book with a short sound. Then option A, shoe. This is a long sound. Group, it's a long sound. Blue, a long sound. Four, short sound. This is correct. Now, how do we know a sound is long? By this symbol, this colon. So, option D is the correct answer. Judging from the transcription, we can see that option D is the appropriate answer. Question 107. Choose the word that has the same vowel sound as the one in bracket from question below. The word is neighbor. Option A, blood. Option B, standard. Option C, board. Option D, source. Now, let's add over to the board for the transcription. Now, the word neighbor and the letters in bracket O-W-R it is transcribed as this, the schwa sound. Now let's take a look at the options. It is not present in this sound, so it is wrong. The, the, the schwa sound is present in the word standard. So this is correct. It is not present in this word and it is not in this. So we can see that option B is the correct answer. So judging from my explanation, judging from the transcription, we can conclusively say that option B is the accurate answer. Question 108, choose the word that has the same vowel sound as the one in brackets from the questions below. The word is air. Option A, care. Option B, near. Option C, mere. Option D, weird. Now let's go back to the board for the transcription. Now we can see from this transcription that H and R is silent. So the word is pronounced as air. Option A, care. We can see that it has the same vowel sound, which is a diphthong. Option B, near, me, and option D, weird. So we have this sound against this. So we can see this is wrong. This is wrong and this is wrong. So, conclusively, we can say that option A is the appropriate answer. Question 109. Choose the word that has the consonant sound as the one in brackets from questions below. Now, the word is adjust. Option A, diary. Option B, judge. Option C, dynasty. Option D, anticipate. Now, let's go back to the board to check out the transcription. So, the letter in brackets J is pronounced as J. Same as this consonant sound. So, we have diary. It is not present in this word. Judge. We have it twice in this word. So, this is the correct answer. Dynasty. It is not in this word. Anticipate. It is not in this word. Now, for option C, it does not mean the word, the word pronounced dynasty is wrong. But dynasty, dynasty is applicable to American English. But for British English, it is pronounced as dynasty. So 
So we can see that option B is the correct answer. So in summary, the word adjust and with the sound j is present in the word judge. Option B is the appropriate answer. Question 110. Choose the word that has the consonant sound as the word in brackets from questions below. The word here is ankle. Option A, thong. Option B, new. Option C, pneumatic. Option D, for two sentences. Now, let's go back to the board for the transcription. Now, the word ankle with the letter N is articulated as ng. Option A, thong. We can see the sound present in the transcription for the word thong. New, it is not present here. Not here, not here. So the nasal sound for this word is ung and not this one. Okay, so judging from our transcription and my explanation, we see that thong is the correct answer, option A. We've come to the end of this segment. If you're enjoying the content of this video, please do well to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button, and tap on the bell notification to get notified when we release our new videos.